Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Um, my name is Donald Hutera, and I'm talking to you from my lovely attic in North London um, on this very windy day here. Uh, welcome to Taiwan Season 2020 Online Symposium, Connecting with Taiwan. Uh, for those of you who have been here before, you know that I'm about to tell you about what this month-long marathon is. And for those who are new, well, here, here's what it is. Every Tuesday, I have a 45-minute informal conversation with one of the four choreographers whose work was meant to be seen all of August in Edinburgh at either Dance Base or Summer Hall, two key venues there. Uh, those sessions are then repeated on Thursdays um, and then on Wednesdays and Fridays, there is a two hour each day, two part themed webinar. And this week we're, we're looking at, uh, at live art and cross cultural translation, et cetera, et cetera. Next week we'll be looking at indigenous art, but you'll hear more about that later. Throughout this session, um, any comments or questions you might have, please post them in comment box, uh, the comment box where, where, wherever that is on your system, and we'll deal with that, uh, as many of those as we can. We are also quite interested in who you are, where you are, why you have joined us. So if you care to say something about yourself, it would just be useful to know. Um, so without further ado, um, I would like to, uh, bring on stage River Lynn, who is the keynote speaker this week for today's session, which is called Live Art, Performance, Exhibition, and Expanded Choreography. River, please come to the virtual stage. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, John, wow. for welcoming this section this afternoon and evening. And hello, everybody, and all the online viewers from around the world, including Australia and Europe and Taiwan and other parts of Asia. Uh, my name is River Lin. I'm a Taiwanese performance artist based in Paris. Uh, but currently, I'm, in, I'm back in Taipei for some some events. And yeah, today I am very pleased to, well, after a Wednesday section about um, cross culture collaboration and translation, Today, I'm very pleased to present to you um, and introduce a little bit about what's going on in Taiwan of the live art practice in the museum or visual art sphere. And um, today, uh, I will be doing a presentation um, introducing three works, including my own. And uh, but also, I will have I will be having um, three lovely guests, special guests. They are artists. Um, Fungus Nayao, a uh, choreographer and dancer, indigenous choreographer and dancer from the Amin tribe of Taiwan. And also the sound and contemporary artist Lin Chi Wei from Taiwan, currently based in Paris. And also um, the director of Maja, the con contemporary art museum of Naples, Napoli in Italy, and the uh, uh, founding director and creator of Cosmopolis, the biannual event at Central Pompidou, to join us um, having the discussion and articulating um, the creative and curatorial process towards the life of perspective and practice. Okay. C'est parti. Let's get started. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, cool. Um, so um, the, the, the presentation that I'm giving is about live exhibition and expanded choreography. Um, the, 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 the cover image that you see is from um, Fungus Nayao's work, Misa Yai. It's very difficult. <laughs> Misinya, Misinya, sorry, Masinya, Masinya. It's from um, the Ami tribe indigenous language. Misinya means literally can be translated as crazy or go wild. And so 
this is the uh, Motun Museum of Taipei that been um, that presenting and staging um, this Masinya exhibition and work from fungus um, three no three years ago in two thousand seventeen. And later it was presented in um, Central Pompidou last year. And so as you see um, th in this image, you see some installations basically composed by, well, guitar or some posters and of course, Taiwan beers and, um, and as if like a, a living room setting. So in this, in this, pres uh, in this section, I will be, um, well, through artist practice and case studies that hopefully um, that we will be able to get to know the live art as exhibition or performance based artwork um, in, the con uh, in the context of Taiwanese um, institutions. And I just wanted to say uh, briefly the word that I'm, the wording that I'm using, expanded choreography, is not necessarily or not only rooted um, in the contemporary dance point of view, but expanded um, nowadays into the visual art dictionary. Now, for example, you can find this terminology on MoMA's um, online um, resources. And of course, I will be explaining later why um, I'm borrowing these terminologies to address the live art practice of today's cases. Okay. Um, let's go for um, this. When I was formulating this um, sharing, um, some keywords or key notions came to me, and I would like to contextualize a little bit before we go diving into artist um, case studies. So basically, I would like to share and examine how the live performance in gallery settings being presented and considered and viewed or even experienced or participated. Not only, uh, not only in this increasing um, fashionably um, trend in um, the Westerner context of, of Europe or North America, but also how we can further consider um, this kind of practice, live performance practice in gallery settings in the Asia Pacific. And secondly, um, through these case studies, um, we will be checking or um, viewing how the artist staging the artist's body as archive, object, exhibition, situation, score, or even instrument, etc. etc. And finally, the third entry point of this presentation will be looking at participation, collaboration, and encounter between the artists and participants or audiences and viewers. So let's go to check the first case. The first work that I would like to share with you all is Tech Music, made by the sound artist from Taiwan, Lin Shi Wei. Um, Shi Wei is a I iconic artist emerged from 90s of Taiwan, where at that time it was just at the very beginning of the lift of martial law from the KMT party, led by what founded by Zhang Kai Shek, if you if you if you know some this information of the history. And so Chi Wei's style practice is basically um conflicting or let's say involving um participation, the crowd, the situation, and the human body as the instrument. And in in in, in such practice, um he has been considering um the actions or how the artist's body and a crowd's body can do in the social engagement context. So let's check this work, this video. It's, oh, sorry, just say some words. This work is basically performance-based, normally presented in community space or public space, and also exhibition and museum gallery spaces. And this, this performance-based hour is basically conducted or performed through the audience participation to stage the score onto the tech, the object tech. Let's look at the video excerpt. The version at the Sonto Pompidou last year.
of the word, uh, basically, I will interpret it as um, the artist has been choreographing the situation, composing, um, uh, including um, the, the presence of the audience and the space and how the audience move and act through this tape, rotating a, 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 a circle. And of course, we have Chi Wei here. And so after this presentation, we'll be inviting all the artists to um, articulate more and introduce with us more about their uh, uh, creative process of their projects. And the second word that I would like to share with you today is Masinkia. Ma masin masinkia. I'm really sorry. Masinkia, sorry for my pronunciation if it's not correct. Um, it's made by the artist uh, Bankas Nayao. Um, the indigenous choreographer and dancer from Taiwan, from the Amis, Ami track. Um, in this work, uh, staged in uh, Motin Museum in Taipei in 2017, um, basically the artist Funkus, um staging the assembly or the social encounter or um, the situation, the 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 the, situa the, con the situational gathering in this museum space, and the local context in Taiwan here is like, um, you know, in terms of the transformative justice has been um, raised and uh, been uh, joined people's uh, citizens' attention up, uh, in Taiwan approximately after 2000, the year 2000. And in this way, um, the indigenous culture and the revival of this, their presence, their voices, their bodies, and their discourse, and of course their history has been um, presented after 2000 in the public institutions of contemporary art and the theater. So at the very beginning in this 
uh, specific cultural phenomenon and understanding in Taiwan, people or the 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 general public normally consider, you know, the indigenous culture is, um, you know, uh, related or connected with, um, you know, rural space of the, um, the 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 city or the country. And however, and whatever it, it can be not urban, something like that, you know, people have been this um, general understanding of stereotype or, you know, whatever you can say that racism or um, the, the misunderstanding to this specific culture. Um, but after the, the support and the ongoing facilitation, and collaboration between the indigenous artists and the uh, arts institutions in Taiwan. Nowadays, the um, this kind of artistic expression of performative of, of performative practice in the museum can be seen um, increasingly. So, one uh, key word in this context is this one: masinkia uh, means go crazy or go wild in the Amis uh, indigenous language. In this. Uh, in this in this space, it's like uh, an exhibition taking place uh, around one month, and every day and night, the audience are um, <clears throat> welcome and invited to come into the museum and to encounter all the indigenous artists from the tribe. And of course, they are friends and fellows of uh, fungus, and they have been in this um, live exhibition. They have been given. I would say um, chatting or creatively uh, lecture performance, of course, drinking together, getting to know you, dancing together to celebrate the culture and the identity in the museum space. And at the same time, museum as a metaphor of being social or being challenged from the object-based display to the life encounter politically. So let's check it out. Let's watch a little bit the excerpt of this um, work, Masin Pia. Um, the version that the artist um, provides is also made from um, the Cosmopolis presentation last year in the Central Public Group. Donc ma première chanson, c'est une chanson qui m'a beaucoup marqué, qui s'appelle As As The Deer. Chicago 
last year in Paris. And the third piece of uh, is made by myself. And um, I presented this work last year in Quantu uh, Museum of Fine Art in Taiwan, Taipei. And the title is called My Body is a Queer History Museum. So basically, um, through staging this work, I wanted to bring together um, <clears throat> performers from a range of um, sexuality and gender identities, 
no matter it's homosexual, heterosexual, transgender, and beyond, could together to celebrate the um, gender equality, or let's say um, considering uh, to to celebrate the gender equality in the context of considering their bodies is the historical site of their own queer history museum. So this is like uh, uh, also a gathering uh, based or ongoing situation, situation based performance being staged in the museum space, conflicting lecture performance, um, workshop, um, doing catwalk and karaoke together from, uh, with the audience members. And so let's check a little bit this excerpt. Yes, so um, these are the three um, works that I would like to share with all of you this uh, today or tonight. Um, so now I would like to invite uh, my lovely three guests, Chi Wei, uh, Bungus, and Catherine onto this stage. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, so um, at the very beginning, can I can I have um, Bangus and Xi Wei? Can you both um, well separately share with us a little bit more about the work? 
how that for example um the missing missing care how did you conceive this project and um, to be staged in the museum because that was also your first time to do live performance and staging live works in the gallery settings right so how did it come out this so i go first okay um hi everyone i'm fungus nayao i'm from taiwan i'm indigenous people from amish tribe and i'm also the director and the curator of machine gi uh, my pronunciation may may be the correct one the machine gi it's not machine or something like the the river says because that's really the uh, mother tongue of my language Machingai means crazy and something is insane or the people get weird or get uh, really insane or crazy, something like that. And in the Masingai in 2017, I didn't know what I just do for the life, the, like the live art or the live performance because uh, why I want to do this piece I have to be honest that it's a, it's about my background because I'm a indigenous people in Taiwan in Amstrad and my father and my mother also they are uh, one hundred percent I can say that the Amstrad person but we are located in the like the local town it's more uh, it's more city like uh, in Taitong. So my background is uh, a little bit different than the others that I really live in with, with the hands people and another uh, people in my tribe. So there's not only Amish tribe or indigenous tribe in my town in Taitong. So I really learned a lot of mixed, mixed culture about my childhood. Because I was uh, I was 18 years old and I go to Taipei to work and to study. So I have to be honest that I am not like the mainstream media says the the indigenous indigenous peoples looks like and what they behave like because I'm a little different because my childhood is totally different. So I do this work is because I do a lot of uh, production about uh, indigenous work. They are all asked us to do the like the certain way of the government say, like you have to learn how to sing and you have to learn how to do the ceremony, do this harvest festival or do the dance of the tribe songs. And that really bothers me because my original place is my family. My family is not my tribe. So I was really cur curiosity about my tribe. It's totally different. So every time when I go back to my father's tribe and go back to my mother's tribe, they are all look, uh, they, their, their eyes look at me. It's like I'm the outsider of the tribe because I'm not grow up in the tribe. So I take the, the eyes, the, the view of theirs, theirs looking as really uh, important things for me. So I was wondering if we can have a, a good conversation or a good chance to know each other, what will be like? Because for me, it's not dance for the audience or, or singing for the audience. Maybe we can have like, making friends with others because once we can make friends with others maybe we will uh, jump to the the further way that we are we erase all the nationality and we are erase all the genders we we just talked about the topic that we like maybe the topic can trigger us that to uh, to make each other understand understanding that oh why you think about this and how you do that because of your background. So this is the uh, main idea that I want to share the stories or the share the idea. And 
to do with the museum is another to do with the museum is a, another story because every time I take my parents and take my uh, tribal brother or my my grand grandmothers to Taipei, I want to share uh, my leisure time with them. I will take them to the show, to the production, and to see the theater, or also and also the museum. But every time they go to the museum, they was they are just like, oh, the building is so great, but I have a uh, poor clothes, I cannot get in, or I have only slippers in my foot, so I cannot go in, and the building is so good. Maybe that costs a lot of money, so I cannot go in. So it's like if we have uh, another tribe life or another hometown in in the Taipei or in another place that but that is not my birthplace. That what will it be like, and if we are miss people or indigenous people, that we move away to our life to another place. And what the life will be like, so it's really important for me to do that to recognize if there is an activity in the museum, and what will what will you think about the museum? Is a home or activity or exhibition or performance or the acting, and and also I want to have a conversation with the mainstream media that we are mixed people or we indigenous people we have. Really different types of people. We are still the people. So, I ask from different gender and different type of type of profession, and different ages, to join this team to the machine guy, because we want to share the different story. But if we we all are the indigenous people, the story will be totally different. That because of our, our because of our, of our background. So this is the two main idea about why I want to do the machine in Taipei. But in the in the Paris in Centre Pompidou, it's totally different way because in Taiwan we share the same language, even the、uh, Mandarin and the Han's language or or English also. And maybe the music also, or the dancing also. We open the space to having the people come in, and let's have a chat and a talk. And so there's no limits for the exhibition or the perform. We are not try to perform in the museum, but we want to make the situation that is more real in the uh in the museum that. You are not running into a exhibition. You are running into a someone's life. So we want to make the connection with the everyone. But in Paris, we share the different language. So that will be totally different point of view. So me and my dramaturg and and also Iris, we try to figure out what is represent for the Taiwan or indigenous culture, because. We cannot share the 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 same language, and we have to make something. It's like more settled down. We have to make that into the program. So we have the work workshop program and the lecture, and also the like the one man story, and also the bakongo and the mini concert. So we take that as a young people who run into the has a、uh, harvest festival. You can see the the journey of. They are they are growing up. So in this one week, we share this、uh, type of the storyline to make you understand about about Taiwan or about、uh, indigenous people and also about our story. So the most important thing is we cannot have the same language, but it's more like when the elders. Passing along the culture to to me because I'm a younger generation, we still have one thing lost because our elders using the mother tongue and I only can learn the mother tongue and listen to,、uh, or understanding the mother tongue is only just like a a thirty percent, but there's still something missing about the translation in the translation. So 
I think this is uh, the the uh, really interesting thing is we 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 didn't know everything about the elder saint, but we can learn from what he is doing or she is doing by just accompanying with the elders and the mother or or grandfather like that. So maybe getting along together to have time together is really important. So uh, you can see the footage that uh, in the Bagongo. Bagongo is uh, Amish tribe language in the way that we're sharing story. We're sharing story about everything you have been through in this day. So in the Bagongo, we use the Google translation to have the talk. It's not like the real talk, but once we have the same tools to have a communication. It's more like we are getting more closer because of this tool. So in the in the Bagongo, so everybody can can get this letter. The letter is about hi, I'm from Taiwan. Maybe you are not uh you have no idea about Taiwan, but we still have some stories uh about Taiwan or me want to share with you. If you if you want to join us, you can take this later and and bring your APP to the exhibition so we can have talk. So then one hour talk later. But but there is no verbal language, only the virtual language that they are using the APP for uh, exchanging the stories and teach something or sharing something or even dancing together. But it's because the same emotion and the uh, weird tools about the APP. So in Paris and, and Taipei, it's really totally different way to deal with the machine guy. In Paris, we try to map out the Amis experience in another land about the culture. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so, um, when you presented this work in, in, in Taiwan, it was like more, more about restaging or reenacting the everyday of the tribe culture. Whereas in, in Paris, it was another um, situation. I, I guess I would say about Maybe. knowledge production. But I didn't have yeah, in that context. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> no, I mean through this through this um, project. To produce knowledge culturally and socially, yeah. Mm. And Chi Wei, uh, Chi Wei, can you? Oh, Catherine, do you want I to say something? I can also jump in oh, okay. on that just to add to what Congress was saying about her. That um, uh, as well as the um, having really worked on a new structure of how that presentation within a museum space could function without language, which is very, very uh, impressive and direct. And people keep kept coming back for different sessions. Um, we had really regular um, audience members who stayed pretty much for, come, for the whole um, event each day would come back. There were, as there was a sense of um, a radical presence within that museum space, which was very important and uh, transmits a lot, you know, beyond the really uh, smart and uh, funny uses of the app and music and dance and so on. Just the fact of presenting a very thriving cultural intelligence within uh, what is still a white box museum space also that's very focused on European American modernism rather than opening to other um, aesthetic heritages was a very, very strong statement. Um, so just to add to the what you were saying about knowledge sharing and um, the, the translation that was happening, cultural and other translation, there was the, the live um, statement about the importance of other perspectives and other cultural heritages was 
really key, I think. So, mm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. This important words of information. Now, I guess later we will be having you to talk with us a little bit more about um, the, the experience of the Cosmopolis project last year in relation to, to the two artists today. Um, so, Chi Wei, Chi Wei, can we? Um, yes. Yeah. Chi Wei, could you share with us a little bit more about tech music? It's a very long term um, work, right? And could you tell us, like, how did you? How did you conceive and stage this um, this work like more than ten years ago, and how it evolved? Um, um, for me, it's a little bit the same as Funkus. It's also very related with my personal history. I mean, in nineties, I work a lot as a programmer for the underground activity, underground music festivals such as noise or industrial music. So in that case, you meet a lot of direct confrontation between the audience and the, the artist. Sometimes artists even provoke the audience to react. And in many occasions, especially in the 90s, student movement contacts, they are the, the audience often react very, also very strong and at the same time very much to be creative. Sometimes I feel it's more, even more creative than the artists do. So this leave me a very deep impression. In this way, I think I kind of encourage or to create a status that make the, this kind of interaction easier to happen. This sometimes and often means conflicts. <laughs> As a programmer, I'm, I'm intended to do that. So, um, so this remains something very important in my head about how art can be. Also at the same period, I'm a student of culture and anthropology. I do a lot of research on the field research for the Taiwanese ceremony, a folk fest ceremony and folk rituals such as shamanism and Taoism practice. So they also have lots of interact between the performers and the audience, audience or the, the, the believers. And uh, for me, the, the turning point is, at, is in 2004 that I was invited to a media art festival in 2004. So I was arranged in the program on the program to play between Carl Stone, the very famous laptop musician, and uh, Francisco Lopez, also another very famous uh, electronic music musician, or, or um, environmental sound musician. So at that time, I decided to do something interesting. I, I decided to do degrade my personal practice as a computer musician to do something similar to, do, to, to that in the principle, but totally triggered by the audience or the, by, the, by the personals. So that's a, a little bit the origin of my tape music. And when, yeah, and afterwards when you develop or present tech music in different spaces or places or come in different communities or social contexts. How, how did it uh, evolve in each different version? Actually, it was evolved very, very, very slow because I, during a long period, I was in China. And even the, I think the second or third functions, uh, the third versions of tape music I continue to work it for like uh, 10 years without lots of changing on it. It's really related with the, the, the audience that react to me. That I don't need to create something new for them because it's already a big confrontation in a way for the audience to receive and to, to react to that. But when you bring it to Europe, for example, uh, the most impressed me was in Berlin, for example. 
if when I bring the same music to Berlin, I think twice. The audience are so um, so easy and so um, good at interpreting tape music to the extent that I don't feel the tape music is needed for them. You see what I mean? So that also made me try to have newer versions or completely different thinkings about the tape music work. And how, and how was the experience last year in the Cosmopolis? It, it is very interesting because it, normally in the big museum, the audience are, uh, when, the, when the visitors are visiting museum, they are not intended to shout or to, 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 to speak loud or even to make uh, big gestures. But so in this case, the, I, uh, I, I make a specific version which adapt more to the museum circumstance. That is called um, the no music, the not, like the no music, in jie. So in that sense, the, um, the, this version demands a, a more, delicate some expressions instead of shouting loud or shouting. So in this, in this case, it works well because people are not demand to make their exaggerated gestures or sounds. Yeah, because both the note music um, and also tech music are based on the, I mean, you, you, you sort of like draw or implement the, the score onto such object. Mm -hmm. Does this, does the object mean something to you when you make choice? Uh, it, it relates more with the interactivity of the audience. I mean, the material can change the way the audience reading it and react to it, totally change it. It's very true. For example, the the not music one, you can play in total darkness. Actually, that was made to intend to to perform in total darkness. So in that case, the audience could react very very differently. Even though I only tried it several times with my friends instead of the real audiences. Mm -hmm. And and Catherine, could you? Um, share with us about um, your experiences, your experience of working with um, the Yeah, I mean, um, Joe, as he was just saying, modified or thought about how the performance could work in that museum space so that people could feel comfortable within an exhibition with other people walking around and so on uh, in singing and making noise and performing in some sense and being part of this experiment of this temporary uh, collective that the tape music creates. The public loved that. I mean, there wasn't any problem with them also because of how it was set up, there was a dedicated space. It felt, you know, very simple and comfortable. You didn't have to stand in front of anyone, although it was in the middle of um, of the exhibition. People mm -hmm. walked past. Um, people really, really enjoyed this possibility of experiencing something that related to uh, what they were thinking about in the the exhibition as well. We did it on Sunday afternoons, so there usually were, you know, quite a lot of people around um, seeing the show and then stopping to either be in or or watch the performance. And we did it um, every Sunday throughout mm -hmm. the show. So we was also had quite a big um, commitment in being there every time and uh, conducting the the sessions. But, yeah, it worked very well. 
I guess another um, thing to ask. Oh, sorry, you go first, Fungus. Oh, no, 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 you go first okay. because uh, you go first. You go first. Oh, I was going to go on about um, it's a work, and I've talked to Joe about this before, that is very interesting in relation to how in different cultural contexts as well as spatial contexts, you know, in the museum or on the museum, people might um, uh, embody that protocol that Joe has set up. And I was going to ask him if he mm -hmm. wanted to speak a little bit more about that. That's something that over time, I think, um, uh, has been played out in many different contexts. And so there's kind of this accumulation of a, uh, forms of cultural knowledge or cultural translation that are very interesting within the work. I'll throw over to you to <laughs> talk about that. Yes, um, actually, I, I do think it's an instrument tool made for the third world countries, much more than made for Centre Pompidou. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when the third world audience meet the, this tape, they, they always have very, since they didn't anticipate and they are not accustomed to, to do this kind of, I mean, these audience are the people that never touch anything related with contemporary music or even contemporary art at all. Mostly the, the audience I, I, I can't I deal with in Taiwan and also in in China, especially in China. So that mm. always make something, I don't know, exciting because you cannot anticipate it at all, how they will react to it. And they're, they're always very astonished and very surprised, sometimes excited to, to react to it. But when you bring it to, to, to the artist community in Germany, <laughs> so it's totally something else. Yeah. And you were saying also that like certain contexts that where you've presented it, people are very good at following rules and also maybe very good at observing other people. And then other contexts, people are much more individually expressive or wanting to, you know, yes. raise time yes. in the group and things. The most uh, radical experience I experienced in, is in Hong Kong. Mm. That I played in Hong Kong many times, but every time nobody cared about anybody else. Nobody listened and nobody tried to co cooperate with anyone. Everyone goes their own way. <laughs> and uh, with the audi Hong Kong is audience who is, who is not acquainted to the contemporary art, they were all just laughing and just uh, <laughs> feel very released to, to, to interpret this. So mm. it's very noisy in, in this way in Hong Kong. <laughs> not, not especially in a positive sense. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but for example, in Japan probably, and sometimes in Taiwan, people are very disciplined. So they try to, everybody try to do, everybody try to find uh, one thing to follow. But how mm. this one is created is very interesting because there's no, I didn't tell them how to do that. So they, so some of people will start to lead it and the others will follow. In this way, it sounds best. It sounds like music. <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, how about uh, Frank, did you want to say something? Mm. Oh, yes, I want to say something because I, I, in 2016, I have a great opportunity to meet the, the tap music in, 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 in another museum with, with my, my performers and in Taipei City Museum, I forgot how to say. Oh, uh, in the Mong Tu Museum. Oh, no, yes. the Taipei Fine Art Museum. Yes, Taipei Fine Art Museum. And at that time, I I take my like ten performers to to the museum to to see the museum, and we also saw the tap music, and we are the participation okay. in the tap music. And oh, very funny was, to yes, know. Yes, that was really beautiful that uh, 
the words triggered them to sing and they in the in the group they will quickly find uh, who is the like the lead vocal to, mm. to be the follower to follow so the the music is really really i think it's totally different way to think about the music that uh, who come first the melody come first or the 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 rhythm come first or the idea come first for the music they just follow and they just do it and they will find the harmony about the music and mm -hmm. the interesting thing is uh, after the experience uh, my performer asked asked me that uh, what try uh, what tribe of the music of the the work because they they never know about they oh this is the like the uh the this is the the piece this is the work they are asking whose tribe is it and wh whose tribal music is is about the like the tap music so it's a really impression experience for me and my my performers thanks i guess you you didn't know you didn't know this chi wei no no i didn't know this <laughs> she never tell me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh so so far uh donna do uh, would you like to give some feedback well i would but given that you are also uh, uh somebody who is represented here with work i would like to hear a bit more about your work before opening it up to me and opening it up opening up this discussion to our audience now. So maybe River, you could you could you could expand a bit on the thinking behind mm -hmm. what we saw. Yeah. I actually forgot People. this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm okay, glad to you. remind um, you. So mm, basically, my performance-based work is always staged in gallery space in gallery settings so and one of uh, one of my in my research interests has been revolving around the notion of performing archive um in the context of you know body as a performance artist so body as the museum body as the collection body is the archive of something 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 in relation to you know, individual or collective um, identities and also memories or something relevant. So, um, so in, 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 in the piece that I share um, in this section is, is for me more about considering how this individual body actually um, collect by themselves in relation to queer um, understanding that how did they grow up and how has uh, how how has the society shaped their own current um, gender identity and sexuality for example um, and the reason why I didn't cast I didn't have I didn't I didn't have the casting the lineup of all homosexual performers because I really wanted to try like how inclusion can be conducted and presented in this in this performance in terms of performing identities in this way. So and the reason why I used um, the method of forming gathering or assembling um, those bodies and the audience members is because I wanted to do a party, <laughs> a party in a museum space. That means um, party conceptually as a tool to advocate or to celebrate um, voices, some specific voices and uh, gestures and uh, or to against certain protocol in a wider range. Yeah, so so um, the piece, My Body is a Queer History Museum in Taipei last year was um, presented 
two or three times in a weekend and each time running for um, five hours or four hours, I forgot, as a durational performance and an ongoing situation in the museum space. So, so the visitors can come and go, of course, at any point, and they might um, encounter different parts of the, the exhibition. They might encounter the runway project or the karaoke moment or the workshop moment. Now, for example, um, in the excerpt, you saw uh, uh, a biological female performer. She was inviting the audience member to bend her breast. And she wanted to do this because she felt that could be a very great opportunity to do this for the very first time of her life. Yeah, she never, I mean, she, she of course, she considered herself as um, tomboy, lesbian, uh, but she never ever do this um, process of, you know, press, pressing or uh, compressing her her breast, her breast. And she, she was like doing this with the audience members. And that was also, I would say a sex education <laughs> to, to, to many people in that context. So I have a lot of questions about many, many things, uh, understandably. And I'll just share some of the ideas and you can pick anything that is particularly appealing or that triggers anything in you. And that's the same for anyone who may be watching us and listening to us now. Uh, I'm thinking about um, spectacle uh, versus connection and and what what do those two things mean together uh, do they work together do they work separately and how I'm also thinking about on a similar line I guess invitation and provocation um, which also makes me think of, of terms that I, I enjoy about performance uh, concept terms uh, seduction and surrender you know how do you seduce an audience and when does the audience member surrender to that seduction uh, it's something that plays around in my head sometimes because i ask myself when does that happen to me that surrender i'm also thinking about the the um, and chiwe you mentioned well you actually many of you mentioned taking time and i know you know with art that you can't force it uh, or it's maybe not comes out it doesn't maybe come out so well when it's forced but just this notion of evolution and taking time and and perhaps in, in terms of the world we're living in today does what new meanings to taking creative time are there now um i'm also thinking well uh, river you 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 know party the whole notion of party it kind of relates to to the, the other works the collective experience um yeah, I'm always very interested in who the audience is and what they want and what they derive from the experience. Um, and also for, for everyone, but for Catherine, this, this idea about an environment, a museum environment that you might feel intimidated by or not welcome in, and those disruptions of, of behavior that can arise, that for me is a value, of course, of performance, but perhaps some more talk about that might be useful. And lastly, I know I'm throwing a lot out, um, discovery, what discoveries get made? Because River, you just mentioned the, the binding of the breasts and how that was a new experience. So I, I wonder perhaps for each of you, what discoveries have been made along the way so that's a lot. I guess I would say pick and choose what you feel most interested in or have uh, the best response for. And I don't know who might want to begin, but I, I will now be quiet and leave the floor to the four of you and to our audience. Who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe we can start with the spectacle and connection. I, I do find this this is probably the one thing very common between us three that we all face the same question of what is pre-written script and what is uh, improvisation at the place or what is living and what is um, uh, pre-write i think we all meet the same question also i think this is very present in masinka work of angus i mean what what to what extent it is performance and to what extent it is improvisation i think this is this is very essential, especially for me. Uh, for me personally, it's, it's a very serious issue even until today. And, and for me, that relates to discoveries because I'm quite interested as, as, uh, as a consumer of culture, but also as a, a maker myself or performer, whatever I'm attempting to do in my, in my life at this stage uh, of what is calculated and planned and prepared and then the things that you don't expect the unpredictable uh for me uh, and i would imagine for for most of you or all of you that that live art is very conducive to that unpredictability which can be so exciting because it's not it's not it's living it's a very living thing it is very exciting for me but probably not for the festival curators <laughs> because everybody wants something safe that they can represent as they they represent something they already know already they can control not something totally out of control to what extent that we you can we can let things out of control this is always always a problem to me well do, you know it's it's even interesting to me that that uh, fungus you're, you're um your work uh the meaning of the title because titles for me are always clues to to the to the work itself and very useful clues it if it's crazy or you know wildly insane um that that is a that's that's an uh intriguing and appealing choice to name the the, the work the event that you are inviting people to be a part of even if they don't know that that's what it means Uh, for me, it's uh, the meaning of Masingai uh, really means a lot for me because it's like the the thing that you have never never saw. So in maybe it's in the performance or in the exhibition or in the gallery in the museum. So maybe we are going to be that view for the viewers for the for the the viewer who comes into the museum. So it's like we try to use this as an invitation that we want to exchange for the universal value to the specific part value, individual value, uh, especially in Taiwan. Because uh, when we want to share the culture, but not in the, the performing way. We want to share that we truly have different habit about the daily life. But what habit can we talk about? Maybe that's the trigger or that's the, uh, like the, uh, the reduce, uh, so uh, the seduce for the, for the viewers, because we are really focused, like for example, we, we are really focused on the, the wine. The wine for uh, indeed, in these people in Taiwan is the st stereotype about the image of indigenous people but maybe we are in paris the the wine or the beer is totally different for the for the viewers who what who watching us but we want to tell in the story that if we have the same wine but the wine can be the universal value but the wine story about me is the individual value for us because like we get the wine in the tribe. That's from our uh, generation to another generation. That means something that the elders give you the wine or the 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 rice wine. 
that means you have the duty to take responsibility of the tribe. So it's not I we just we want to share the wine and having the the, the relaxed time about talking. It's the wine itself. It's the story we want to share. The totally different value about everything. So so we can have the talk and uh, the something that is really catch their eyes that. Maybe why is the the for the viewers for the uh, for the is the image for attach the people, but we still have the story about the the why. So we choose a lot of items or the property like that to have the first catch, and then you can catch the this view to individual stories about. Our performance or our story. So, um, you know, I, I'm thinking now about wine uh, as as a passing on of responsibility. So, thank you. That's a very interesting way to think about about uh, what I associate with leisure and uh, and letting go. And I, I'm also thinking about. Um, the, the idea of, of uh, you know, seduction, surrender, and fishing. You know, you put a little bait on a hook mm. and the fish bite, and they might, it might be a really interesting worm that they've never tasted before or that they've never experienced. And we, but, we, we, do, we do really have like a co-collective collaboration that we, uh, we go to Paris before the exhibition, like for seven days, because we want to, uh, really map out the Amis experience. If we don't have the chair, what uh, wooden table or what box we are going to use as the live uh, property. So we find so many things about how to have the uh, culture exchange with the, the for, uh, for the exhibition. And the wine and the red wine, that's the most the big culture shock in Paris because they can, they can use the wine, the Taiwan beer, to compare with the red wine. They are going to choose what red wine is really good for their Taiwan beer. They can, they they can know because they have they have different uh, taste uh, about the wine. Which wine is much more better? It's more closer to his story, so he can make the wine uh, uh, in the life in the live exhibition. But the story is about the wine. It's not about the, we want to shock you that we, we put the red wine and the Taiwan beer together. Because we are trying to uh, find out what's the taste of the, of the flavor that is more close to our life. So the, the uh, really fantastic experience about in Paris is like the cyberpunk in Amish tribe. Because we are now, we are moving the land to Paris, but we cannot have all the items and all the food as we do in Taiwan. So we have to uh, collect and to, to find out and to, to discover something is really good for me that can trigger me to talk influently, to share the story like I can uh, see any bars, I can, I, I can uh, trigger me that, oh, there's there, this story in the, in the life that when I was in Taipei or in Paris, so that would be uh, about the culture shock and the uh, value exchanging about all the Masingia in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, I can maybe... Oh, Catherine, go ahead. Shall I jump, jump in? There are also... Um, um, say that I've been thinking also about the museum context in Taiwan and then in Europe or in Paris for um, Cosmopolis at Pompidou and the fact that in Taiwan there is very, very good support for um, live arts in general and a kind of seems to be a kind of flexibility in the museum context to you know, take risks or present different formats that can be more complicated in um, 
certainly in large institutions in Europe like the Pompidou. So there was a huge discussion around the alcohol and what we would or wouldn't be allowed to do. <laughs> um, and also you know, lots of other issues that we had to go through where I think it was quite shocking for Fungus and all the other performers and Iris after um, the experience of performing that work in uh, Taiwan at the and National University of Education to come as the second presentation to Pompidou and to, I mean, to have to rethink things that they weren't expecting to have to rethink, which was really more about the institutional context than the cultural translation. But I wondered if the three of you had um, some reflections on the kind of context in Taiwan that there is for uh, live arts today within or without the museum context, within the museum context, but I guess also, you know, in other uh, performing arts mm. contexts. I, I guess I can, yes. Um, well, this is very um, good question, Catherine, um, because uh, over, the, over the past few years, I would say five, six years, I mean, very recent, um, of course, the very beginning of museums in Taiwan started to think about or present live exhibitions or live art works because of the global trend. The global trend, like looking like looking at Biennale systems, looking at some other major museums in Europe um, cases. So, um, but however, this is like uh, I would say. Um, at the beginning, there there has been um, a complexity of the paradigm because most of the um, museum curators in Taiwan, they are professional at something else, but not performance. So, you know, the knowledge, in terms of the knowledge or the experiences of staging life works in the gallery space, that that is not um, part of the, the system originally. So in this way, um, some museum curators, they might have reached out um, performing or dance or live artists to have to get more understanding or they work with other institutions to co-present performative events. However, over the past few years experiences, I would say the museum spheres in Taiwan they have been, um, yeah, positively um, embracing life practice from a wide range of disciplines. Not only like, you know, visual artists doing something live performatively, but also um, welcoming artists from the theater making or dance making and something else to stage um, conceptual life work or participatory life work in non-theater space. And this ongoing recent and, and ongoing phenomenon is, I would say, according to my observation, is related to the increased knowledge and uh, attention towards interdisciplinary production. Yeah, uh, because, and this is also very new in Taiwan, or I would say in general in Asia, Pacific um, setters because it's not really, you know, in terms of the interdisciplinary artistic production, it's not simply about like, for example, a video artist working with a dance artist and that's interdisciplinary. It's really about like um, how the curatorial, uh, how the curatorial um, sectors and artistic production setters of artists can really um, have such conversation and dialogues um, towards this um, non-binary system of understanding art. Yeah, so I think this is, this is very new, um, but I would say very optimistic in Taiwanese context now. And, and, and those um, recent projects have been really facilitating the visibility of a lot of um, artists from originally from a theater contest, 
to be visible in the visual context and thus generating some conversations. And and what about Chi Wei or, or, or Fugis? Would you like to address Catherine's question? Just one of you on mute and decide to take the lead. There, good. I am not capable of answering because I wasn't really in Taipei during the past years. Fungus. What? I'm still, I'm still thinking. Okay. Well, why don't the two of you think, and we have uh, our, our good friend Gary Platt has asked a couple of questions. Let's deal with the second one first, which is uh, a, a kind of Catherine related question about culture and aesthetics. Can backstage crew can you banner that question please using the magic of technology because it's a good question but i have to look it up i can look it up um all right do the presenters think that some cultures aesthetics are more reciprocal compatible and sympathetic and is that always a good thing or not This also makes me think about, uh, you know, that whole idea about uh, comfort, safety, risk, um, behavior, the right behavior, the wrong behavior. Anybody want to tackle that question? I can jump in uh, just with a, one comment in relation to the question, uh, if I understand it um what what gary's trying to get at one dimension of it may have to do with uh, the awareness of other cultural traditions and the need to translate where perhaps um, those coming from a european or american context uh, in the past at least may have in feeling themselves to be at the center of certain uh, ways that art history or performance history is, has been written, uh, be less aware of what is going on outside of those histories and less um, immediately willing to begin processes of cultural translation, um, reciprocity and um, uh, so forth, where perhaps where you are drawing on other long-standing aesthetic heritages and cultural traditions from outside of Europe and America, but also very aware of um, modernist forms as they developed there, as well as modernist forms as they developed in, you know, China and Japan, Taiwan, Russia, or elsewhere, then in your thinking, there's already a process of um, reciprocity or cultural translation that can then be played out in uh, the way that you respond to other works or translate your own work. I'm not sure if that's where the question was going, but that's what uh, uh, I had to say in relation to that. Mm. Don't know you are muted. Thank you. Forgive me. Catherine, I have a question for you about Madre. How long have you been there now? And do you want to say just a little bit about working in, in Italy and in, in Naples? So I haven't been here very long at all. Um, in fact, I arrived after the lockdown when planes started flying again between Paris and uh, Naples. So uh, two months on July, August, really. Um, during the lockdown, I was working with an artist 
in Lagos and the museum people in Naples and a great producer in Naples to produce a sculptural installation that has to be performed that we installed when I arrived. So we were um, working out new ways to move ahead with you know, international conversations and producing at a distance, which was very interesting. Um, so when the first thing I did when I arrived was to install a work by Tayo Ogombini, who's a Jamaican-American Nigerian artist based in Lagos and who accepted the challenge to uh, make a commissioned work that would be a playground and so you know, performed by all the uh, big and little kids in the area around the museum who'd been locked up in really tiny spaces um, over this whole summer. So the museum has been had free entry and this uh, installation that's called You Will Play in the Everyday Running uh, is installed over the large courtyard of the museum. And it was a very, very interesting and uh, successful process where we were able to work with this great producer to uh, create these kind of bent bar fluid shapes and bases that refer to cooking pots and, and garden that also refers to cooking plants in Campania and in um, Nigeria. So just thinking also, I bring that up because I was thinking also about objects that are performed and other ways of um, uh, thinking about performance and moving forward with performance in this period of uh, working differently and uh, less mobility. So, you know, whether that certainly will involve different forms of producing at a distance, but keeping translation, keeping conversations, dialogues going internationally, I think that's very important. And uh, thinking about other modes of performance, uh, such as protocols that can be enacted, which is another form of performance at a distance, of course, um, or objects that can be enacted as uh, uh, processes that might suit our current constellation of circumstances. So that's how you're adapting in, in Naples, in, in your new job. What about uh, you, you, uh, you three uh, gentlemen, um, how are you adapting to, to the times we're living in? Um, I would be curious to know. And what do you see as possible ways forward? Um, when you say adapting, do you mean particularly in the pandemic context? Yes. Mm. <laughs> An ominous silence, or maybe not <laughs> ominous, a rumin ruminative silence. I know it's during the lockdown uh, time, right? And how uh, the opinion forward about uh, <laughs> uh, uh, for me it's uh, a little bit shy to say that because uh, this year is my like a family year so I have a daughter in, in this year so it's much more like the new life because of the daughter but not the COVID-19 or, or something. So uh, we changed the style of uh, like the walking time or the walking space because of the, to the daughter. But for the, for the lockdown, it's like, uh, uh, we still have something to do that is obviously uh, when we have uh, much more conversation about or the talking in the virtual or during the the phones or or the not not the real touching ways of connecting each other we will we will have much more imagination about if i run into someone 
what I'm going to say or if I can have a chance to to hold someone's hands and what I'm going to do. So for me, it's really like the the flesh to the flesh that uh, we we have been uh, much more treasure when we can meet with someone. So for me, the like the uh, traditional way in the in the Palestinian stage, that will be uh, uh, for me. It's more uh, uh, touch to see the, the performance or something. But we cannot forget this this uh, this year. And this year for me is a big change. It's about because when I grew growing up in the tribe, uh, the same in 2003, the SARS, the SARS we all, all we all covered by the the mask with the cover, and my generation we call that in tribal language is Lada Mugis, and after 17 years ago we have run into this same situation, uh, the, the same situation this year. So maybe the same same generation uh, who grew up, grew up in 2020, we can have the same name in the uh, tribe name. That means the, the mask of the mouth. So it's a big turning of like 17 years later, something is still going up, but we cannot forget uh when we're holding hands together and we when we can meet the real uh body and we can have some chat and something is totally different that we will take the like the internet is not for necessary but we take the the real person as necessary to have so for me it's that's more important in this lockdown, lockdown uh situation So I, I, I'm also thinking about um, uh, River, your your piece, which is very tactile in many ways, and Chiwei, your piece. People are sitting very very near to each other. Are these two works? Is tape music and and my body is a queer history museum? Are they adaptable to today, or do new things need to be? You know how how do you negotiate that that pre existing work with um, with COVID and touch and and et cetera, et cetera. Well, for, for me, maybe I will do another work. My body is a digital history museum. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I mean, I guess what, what I wanted to say is um, I'm an internet person, but I'm not an internet artist, meaning like, you know, the digital tools or such technology has been not my practice. However, during this pandemic, during time, um, when I was locked down in lockdown in Paris a few months ago, um, that weird everyday situation has been pushing me, or I push myself in a way of getting greater understanding of what's going on in relation to the digital realm. That means I started to do a lot of research, reading books or, you know, um, checking some examples of other artists' work about um, how the artist's body is being considered or presented or represented through the webcam setting or through the live streaming setting or through the digital um, performance setting, not in the real stage, but on the, your desktop of your computer. So how, so I started to learn um, like how to consider the screen itself or the desktop of somebody's computer itself as a stage. And when live everything, no matter if voice or body being um, illustrated onto this um, dimension. How, you know, how the, how, how the artist and the 
the online viewers who, who are keeping in front of uh, behind the, the webcam and have conversation. And what does this kind of conversation mean? Okay. And of course, I totally agree that the value and the likeness of theater and the museum of live performance cannot be adapted because in, at the end of the day, it's, it's simply very different. I mean, the, the internet and the internet sphere and, and tools and digital politics has its another own world of um, discourse. And so at, at this moment, I have no idea about how to reaccommodate or adapt somebody's or my original work onto other sphere because at the end of the day the media the media is different so if i want i will do something i perhaps will simply i would directly address that internet sphere to create something for the internet and within the internet architecture of the performance space chi Wei, do you have any um any response to that? Uh, yes. Basically, tape music is about exchanging cell labels. So it's very dangerous, actually, if we organize this kind of sessions <laughs> in this condition. <laughs> so, but by pure accident, I was, I was invited to do, a, to create a new work for the Belgian um, Royal Museum. New York Royal Fine Art Museum, which is very big. And in that case, I can make uh, a version with the distance of each performer like 10 meters. So in this way, it can work without such danger. But, uh, but it's true that in this year, basically all my, all my performance and exhibitions are annulated. It's very, for me, it's very direct. Well, I, I suppose, um, you know, we, we, because we must, and as creative people and people, we have to find, we have to rethink uh, how we operate and that will lead to different kinds of solutions and attitudes. I know I find um, after an initial wariness to this world we are occupying right now on screen, this flat world, I'm I'm becoming more accustomed to the possibilities of intimacy and and uh, a more focused exchange than perhaps I would have to 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 go back to Rivers work in a party because the party would be swirling around me and people might come up to me I can't do that there, there's there's a different thing where I have to pass the I have to pass my attention or the attention of the flat room to someone else. So it's it's quite an interesting way to re rewire the brain. Um, there's been a comment which I quite like from from Kenneth Wong about uh, balcony culture in Naples. And I don't know if I don't know Naples that well. I haven't been there very much. But uh, Catherine, is is balcony culture uh, thriving in Naples right now? It's alive and strong in Naples, I would say. I mean, I think everyone heard about the kind of uh, singing from the balcony that was going on. There was a, a artist photographer near the museum who during the lockdown was doing film projections every night for the area around him. Since the end of the lockdown over the summer, there have been um, theater performances going on in the uh, open space. So Napoli Teatro Festival, which is a very important theater festival, did go on, you know, belatedly, but with much smaller numbers in the audiences with distancing and often using uh, beautiful outdoor spaces. The museum has two courtyards, so we have also been able to uh, stage some theater and live arts in the courtyards over the summer period during these long summer evenings. So it's good to see, you know, that uh, life is returning. People are very, very happy to be able to, even with some distance, be with other people and to return to the museum, return to live art spaces as well. 
Catherine, as someone who obviously has a relationship with, with Taiwanese artists already, do you foresee that in the future, those relationships, you will continue to build upon them either live or, or digitally? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think there, I definitely have plans for Naples, for um, the Madre, and uh, I think there are some plans, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it, but for some new relationships with Italy in terms of the very good uh, funding support structures that exist for the arts in Taiwan um, through the Ministry of Culture, and of course that's very, very helpful for international museums today, given the cuts and so on, and that live arts are very expensive to present. And in general, uh, moving things, objects around the world is going to become more and more expensive and difficult. Um, uh, it's very important to have that kind of support so that international relationships can um, continue to be developed and the visibility of the very, very vibrant um, artistic scene in Taiwan, including the, the live art scene, can continue to be uh, presented internationally. And I guess, you know, that comment also about the fact that now with transportation of objects becoming more difficult um, post-COVID with uh, both, you know, increases in costs for shipping and also hopefully some more awareness about the uh, problems of objects show that require uh, very high numbers of objects to be shipped very long distances. If anything, this transition should go more in the direction of live arts or longer production residencies. So really focusing on people and translation between spaces and bringing people for longer times and then you know how they can uh, think about their practices differently in those other contexts and relate to uh, local uh, practices and aesthetic heritage so i think that's an optimistic you know note in all of this well yes the, the uh, i have a habit of trying to reduce things to sound bites i guess uh, and, and longer and local seem to be two L, and I like alliteration as well, two L <laughs> words, longer and local. Uh, this and this been, uh, about um, uh, Taiwan uh, digital distribution. This is from Dr. Priscilla Chung Nainbi, uh, hoping to see theater innovation uh, towards digital distributed, distri distributed theater for the new normal. Is Taiwan season, ah, is Taiwan season considering this collaboration? That is a question that that I, none of us here on this page right now, this stage page are able to address, but please bring that to, uh, to Taiwan season's attention. Um, also, there was an earlier question from Gary Platt about India, which is a country I've never been to, but it had to do with audiences in India have any of you presented your work there and uh, what sort of uh, experience, if you've been there, have you had? Anybody? I have, two years ago, I have presented a work in Goa. Um, um, in Goa, um, at the Serendipity Arts Festival, so that's a uh, that's a, a a large scale festival presenting um, visual art, theater, dance, all kinds of um, events. And my experiences towards Goa now for me is very blurry <laughs> because I was at that time I was performing by myself like every day, like five hours per day, and. And I was like super exhausted after performance every day. And I didn't really get a chance to see around the, the city go out. But um, yeah, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say I would, I, I know 
Goa or Indian context, but at least I would, at least I would say that compared with Taiwanese um, experiences, I do have a, a huge interest to get into know um, South South Asian context, like Goa, Sri Lanka, you know, uh, India, Sri Lanka, the, that that region. And when you were super exhausted after five hours of performing, uh, what kind of opportunities did you have to to receive audience feedback or have any kind of exchange? How were you How were you reading the people who were experiencing whatever you were doing, performance wise? I basically well at that time. Every day when I finished my performance, I simply ran away of the run away from the venue to to bars. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, oh my god, I need a drink. Yeah, yeah, and then and then yeah, it was like um, simple change at a bar setting with um, some audiences. And and with the um, the the. My body is a queer history museum. Um, uh, what kind of, uh, besides binding breasts and things uh, that you mentioned, what other kinds of uh, audience participation were they invited up onto the catwalk? Is that what I was seeing in the clip? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so they were invited to do the catwalk and also invited to learn the technique of drag queen. Like, because one of the performers, he is a drag queen, a very young drag queen. And then so he was showing the skill or like secret of how to hide, you know, your, 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 your balls or, you know, like to shape your, um, your male body into visually biological female one. So that, that, that's included. And also other workshop is touching, touching touching exercise like invite like the one of the performers inviting the audience members to to close their eyes and touching strangers body and then in during this uh, in this situation to reconsider your body your social distance between um you and other um other people when you don't know or when you can only know their biological gender through touching, some something like this. It's like the workshop. The parts of the workshop is pretty interactive, conceived by them, and then being staged, you know, as a whole um, situation. So was that was that a workshop that was part of the five hour duration of the piece? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, River, do you have anything for our panel uh, that needs to be covered, or is there are there any other points before we start to wrap up? Um, because I I may have a I may have a, a triggering question to end with, but before we get to that, is there anything that we haven't addressed from mm -hmm. your perspective, River? I guess a lot of issues and concerns have been covered so far, I guess so. Because I was, I, I, uh, earlier I was wondering if, if I would, you know, invite each of the panel members to share about their, um, their experiences either presenting or curating life works in gallery settings or how this experience is different from in the theater settings. And, uh, and I guess we also have already addressed it a little bit. But if, yeah, but of course, if um, any of you wanted to add some words, you are very welcome. Well, could, could I add, just as a, as a provocation or triggering thing, um, audience engagement, marketing, um, uh, finding the right imagery and language to, to best uh, present, put forth your work you know, what sort of choices are involved in that? Um, I guess that's that's a, a question that's related to the, 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 to the worm on the hook to attract the fish. Um, you know, if a title is a clue, 
so is all of the marketing material or in order to get funding you often need to very articulately explain what you think you're going to do even if you really want to find out by doing the thing what you're doing so anything about those sorts of issues for that artists need to address to either make work or get support for work or have their work presented look at those thinking faces <laughs> Who wants to go first? And this will be the final question. You don't have to go on at great length, but. Uh... Um, okay, I try to go first. Uh, but before that, because I was interesting about that, uh, Jiwen uh, posed the, the question, would your work be able to adapt or reinterpret to the social distance for men because i was wondering about this this wondering and for me it's i'm i'm really wish to do something uh, like this because uh our culture uh, changed by the environment and the surrounding that surround us so maybe in this year uh we try to make another way of living by uh, because of this lockdown uh, situation but for me it's like we can do that for like for the for the art that but in the real life if we we're trying to do that as the our old uh, story about the the tribe it's like you are making a curse to the culture it's like uh, you are cursing the culture that we are all, all, all going to do that in the same way. But for me, it's full of imagination that if, what if we cannot holding hands and seeing each other together or living in the same house and the, in the same building to having the ceremony or, or the harvest together, what will be the harvest look like in every year? So that, uh, that's really interesting to to think of that because of, of this year that uh, we cancel so many uh, tribal harvest festival for for real for real. So I will imagine that if I can do in that maybe well we were more treasure about the plant and the farming things and the trees and also the air or the ground and the land. And that's more close to our ancestors ways because we are really dealing with the 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 nature we are not only with the people we we're dealing with the nature and we having the the real uh, real good connection with the nature because we can hunt hunt the food we can collect the food to the mountainside to the riverside and to fish on your own way maybe we are going to be the new age, the one indigenous people of the tribe. And oh, and maybe we are going to be so many several tribe of the indigenous people. We are going to, to pop up for so many cultural different style about the, 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 the indigenous culture. Maybe about this year we can do in that. And for the title of the uh, reducing the, the viewers, because I have uh, in uh, another experience in my VR film. It's, my VR film is it's also about, I want to use this uh, VR headset for the uh, music, how to say, the interactive uh, uh, microphone to make the audience singing with the, the elders or singing with the songs. But every time, I choose the titles and the producer always say no because it's too hard to know. Maybe you are right, but it's too hard to know the what is the film is about because we the the international audience didn't know your language. You have to say the the common language in the universal. So the title 
will be really common. So, but I'm not really satisfied with, with the title. I, I'm still thinking why uh, we have to do it in the title that we want to make some people to understand. Maybe in the subtitle or maybe in the statement we can we can do in that. But in the title, maybe you are going to looking up for in the Google, you're looking up for the titles, you will learn another culture because of, because of you, you, you are using the your mother tongue spelling in the title. Because when I uh, learn everything, when I Google it or when I ask it, I can learn more th further than uh, the film wants to tell me and or the piece wants to tell me or the performance wants to tell me. I can learn much more about how this happened. Why you, why the, the, the curator or why the, the, the director or the choreographer want to use this title and what the titles for me, that will be my meaning about your work. I think that that's really a uh, touch and fantastic that I can have my ima imagination to your work and make it, maybe we are going to have the connection in the film or in the work that you made for us. Yes. You 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 make me think of how um, uh, the difference between a work that I see of any kind where it's all done for me, everything's explained, it's clear and graspable. I think I am much more interested in the kind of work that I can bring myself and my imagination to, that I can reinterpret, uh, that I don't necessarily understand automatically everything about it right away so you've you've expressed that really beautifully thank you thank you chi wei or or river or catherine any 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 sort of wrapping up words river can go <laughs> uh, well maybe maybe it's not uh, a wrapping uh, words, but I found it's interesting when you position seduction V as surrender. And I've been thinking about this set of wordings and yeah, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the seduction, the, the relationship being viewed or constructed as Seduction hyphen surrender is interesting because, yeah, it's it's related to participation, but also institutions and creative artistic strategies in a sense of um, get connected with um, the general public. So, yeah. and, I think and, and, sorry. I just gonna I think the reason it arose in my mind is because after decades of being a professional viewer, a, a writer, a critic, uh, I learned I learned when I let my resistance go. Um, and that was a very appealing and interesting place to be that I, I suddenly realized I had let go of any kind of judgment or, or, or um, yeah, just resistance, I think. It, it, it's a it's it, it's the most satisfying one of the most satisfying experiences when I I, I surrender. So nowadays you are kinder. <laughs> I I think River that I was always rather kind um, because I know that all artists want to give me their best and nobody wants to make what I consider bad work generally, uh, and bad work does exist. But even bad work has its its value of course mm. anyway um chi wei any any final thoughts oh there are so many points <laughs> um um your idea concerning seduction and surrender reminds me of the book of early Confucius, uh, sacred book for the Confucius, Confucius believers, followers, 
which is called uh, the book of the music. So, so that, that's, a, that's no. a good reference <laughs> more to there find are out lots. more, the book of the music. Yes, yes, because there are, it's such a book concerning the relationship between politic and music and how people are turning into one under the function of ceremony or music. And there's the country. I mean, there's a oneness behind the, behind the idea of the book of the Thank music. you for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Catherine, any, any, um, any final words for well, today? I, um, I guess in terms of what I said before, which were kind of concluding comments around the position of live arts, which I feel is a very strong one in the next period, um, just to say that for me, the most interesting and innovative contemporary practice has to do with the creation of relationships and finding ways of sharing knowledge and translating. And, you know, that's at the heart of these practices that we've been talking about today. And I think that uh, that will be at the heart of the next period of uh, where artistic practice is moving towards. So I think life arts has a very healthy present and future. It's good to end on an optimistic note, which I would want to do anyway. Um, so, so thank you everyone. And, and thank you uh, River for, for um, organizing and coordinating these lovely people to be here uh, today. And thank you uh, uh, audience, wherever and whoever you may be for, for sharing this time with us. Um, I'll be back next week with, uh, uh, on Tuesday with uh, Xu Wei Lin of Taigu Tales Dance Theater to talk about the back of beyond. And then next week on Wednesday and Friday, uh, uh, the webinar, the theme is indigenous arts. So we've had a sort of early taster of that today. So, so thank you for that. Um, and all of these conversations, I, I think they're a very valuable document for whoever might be interested in Taiwanese and global culture in 2020. Um, it's all available on Cultural Taiwan UK YouTube and also on Taiwan Season YouTube. So if you know people who you think might find uh, our, our random or not so random uh, discussion, uh, valuable to to listen to then please direct them there um so many many thanks for your presence today thank you thank you donna so long thank everybody you. thank you 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 thank you